Hi, welcome to an audiobook workflow. My name's Mike. As an audio engineer, people come to me sometimes and ask what the best way to record audiobooks is. And I've seen many different studios and also different setups using Twisted Wave, as we will in this video, but also other software packages like Audacity and Logic and Pro Tools and other DAWs that other people use in different markets. Um, I find that um, often people are fairly unorganized when they're recording audiobooks, at least in the beginning. Um, and also unnecessarily create uh, multiple files when they don't need to. And so over the last couple years, I've sort of distilled all of the information that I've gotten and the practice um, that I've gotten from many audiobook narrators um, and put together kind of a workflow to show you guys so that you guys can uh, sort of streamline and organize the way you record books. This by no means is an exhaustible sort of only the right way to do things. Everyone will have their own way, but um, I find this one very helpful, specifically when it comes to organization. Uh, many, many people have files floating around their computer and they sort of overuse their desktop as a dump ground for all of their digital files. And as an audiobook narrator, you're often called to um, pick back up files or recall or re-edit things uh, throughout the course of the book, and then maybe even afterwards as well. And you'll need to know which files you need to get to and also which ones to edit and recall. And then if someone has lost files, which ones to resend them uh, should you need to resend files. And so to me, being uh, a person who works with computers often, organization is very important. So at least in this workflow, we're going to sort of induce some organizational structure um, on how we do audiobooks. Um, so why use Twisted Wave at all? Well, we're doing a series of Twisted Wave videos here on my YouTube channel, and so I thought I'd stick with it. Um, but it's also a very simple and easy to work with program, and it's also very pretty to look at, and that is important. Things that um, are easy to use and pretty to look at are often used more than things that are a little more overly complex and um, obtuse uh, for no apparent reason. Um, button flow and UI is very, very important to a lot of people, and Twisted Wave seems to have gotten that down really well. It's also very concise. It's got a single track, and we call it a single track editor. Um, for doing things that are complex, like adding music and effects to your audio, of course, Twisted Wave is not the type of editor you're going to want to use. Um, but for doing audiobooks and standard voiceover auditions, it's a fantastic program. And being $80, it's priced in a range that's uh, really acceptable for a lot of people. It also has all the tools you need to complete the job, and that's really important. There is an extra tool that you can download to help you along the process, uh, which we detail in the Mastering Audiobooks video, which you should watch after this video so that you can learn how to master your chapters. Um, but out of the box, it comes with EQs and compressors, and the most important thing, the ability to normalize your audio using the RMS spec, which is an average mean of all of the audio in the uh, chapter. Uh, by giving it an average number and raising that to a range that ACX and Audible both uh, require for their submissions. That um, RMS spec is actually not included in Audacity, and so it makes it very difficult to master audiobooks in Audacity. There are tools out there that you can use to sort of approximate uh, a range or boost of audio to get it into the range that you need, but uh, without some uh, calculable, measurable tools, it's difficult to sort of find out where things are. Um, so that's, that's a pretty cool thing that, that Twisted Wave offers. It also offers extendability um, should you need it, and that's a great thing. Twisted Wave works with the AU or audio unit spec language that Mac uses for plugins, and it also works with VST as well. And there are many plugin manufacturers who make little software packages that fit inside Twisted Wave to help you do things like compress and expand and equalize and reverb and noise reduce and limit and do all of the things that audio engineers would do to audio to sort of clean it up so you can go out into the market and buy those or maybe find some downloadable free ones and add those to Twisted Wave so that you can further augment your audio with uh, tools that have been purpose-built to do that and so that extendability uh, is there should you need it. So before we get into talking about the workflow, let's go quickly through some audiobook specs. Um, and in this case, because Audible and ACX are sort of sister companies, they both follow the same spec. So let's take a look at that. Both companies want your audio peaks no higher than three decibels. And so they really want no audio to go above the line of negative three decibels in your audio editor. And that's pretty important. 
They also want an average RMS, or if we were to say just an average volume for the entire chapter, to fall in between negative 18 decibels and negative 23 decibels. And RMS normalization will help us get there. They always want your files to be recorded in mono and 44,100 hertz sample rate and 16-bit audio bit depth. They also want a 0.5 second uh, part room tone at the top. 2.5 seconds between, say, chapter 1 and the body of the chapter, and 3.5 seconds of room tone at the end. And room tone and noise floor can be considered the same thing here, and we'll talk about that in a little bit when we get into it. But that's pretty important. It's also really good for you to build that into your recording uh, so you can just cut it down when you need to. Uh, their submissions uh, require MP3 format files in the 192 kilobit per second spec, which Twisted Wave will also do for you. Um, and they call, at least Audible, calls every body, um, a, uh, every piece of audio a body. Um, so uh, chapters, the introduction, the epilogue, the prologue, opening, closing credits, these are all separate files or separate bodies. So in this video, you might hear me call it a body or a separate file. But in any case, these need to be all separate. So when you go to upload these through ACX, there'll be an upload field for each one of these things. And if you work through Audible, you'll often send it through FTP to their uh, site in um, New Jersey. Uh, retail sample should be provided between one and five minute long, um, and it should be a compelling sell for the book. And then uh, a little further, files over 170 megabytes need to be broken into two sections. Read on the website if your files get that long. It's pretty rare that bodies end up getting uh, that long. That's a really, really, really long chapter. Um, but if it does, read up on that on the website because you have to break that into two. Um, and then just so you guys know, a professional noise floor or the sound of your mic recording nothingness, air and whatever is in your studio without you talking, um, should be between negative 50 and negative 60. And they really want it to be negative 60, um, but I have seen books fly by at negative 50. So with those specs um, as an understanding for you, let's also talk about tools that will enable you to work more quickly through your audiobook. Um, one thing that we find that people do often when they read audiobooks is they mess up. And when you mess up, you need a way for you to indicate to yourself that you've made a mistake so you can quickly go back and fix those mistakes. And uh, in the beginning, a lot of people will say um, the word pickup or um, mess up or something in that world. Uh, or they might even yell an expletive, <laughs> in which case all of these waveforms or these modulations in your audio program will look like every other word and it'll be very difficult for you to go back and find where you've made mistakes and so the easiest way to do this is to actually um, go to Petco uh, whether you physically walk into the place or uh, you buy it online um, they sell a Petco dog training clicker and you can find numerous versions of this um, and they're all like under two bucks um, but the idea is that you hold this in your hand and definitely take off the ring when you buy it so it doesn't make extra noise. Um, and you put your thumb right here and as you're reading along you click down to make a loud transient noise. I actually don't have one of these at my studio here uh, at the moment so I'm using a stapler today which um, is not a good idea but it would make a sound like this. Um, and that loud transient sound uh, would spike the audio waveform and show you exactly where you had some problems. So um, for two bucks, this is a no-brainer. So uh, we need to talk about uh, organization before we get in to record the book. So for me, organization is very important, and your entire voiceover career, should you do more than just audiobook, should also be organized in folder structures. So I'm going to go into my hard drive and I'm going to go into my documents folder and I am going to create a folder by going up to file and new folder and I'm going to call this voiceover and inside this folder by double clicking on it I will go in and I will create a new folder called audiobooks I will also create a new folder called auditions and maybe a new folder called demos. These are things that I do in voiceover. Inside audiobooks, I'm going to create a new folder with some funky naming called template. Template, I can spell. 
Now you might ask, why are you putting so many asterisks on both sides? I want it to be visually clear that this is a non-standard folder. Inside template, I'm going to create a folder called recordings. I will create a new folder called script. A new folder called final mp3s and a folder called notes. Okay, so now that we have a template folder and that is inside of our audiobooks folder, which is inside our voiceover folder, this is great organization. Uh, we have just received an offer for us to read a book, and this is fake, but I will go through this with you guys. Uh, a book called um, The Call of Cthulhu, which is a H.P. Lovecraft book. And so I have gone up and I've uh, done some sort of audition and someone has accepted me. Uh, we'll call this through ACX. And they have sent me the PDF script, likely an email, or I have downloaded it. And so the first thing I do before I get my book is I go into my voiceover folder and into my audiobooks folder and I copy by going up to edit and copy my template and I paste my template right next to it, which enables a copy of that. And I go ahead and hit the return key to rename and I call this the name of the book, The Call of Cthulhu. There we go. Because I've copied my template, all of my folders are already built up inside, which is a great help to me. So I take my script and I drag it into my script folder. And you might say, well, I have it in my email. Why do I need to drag it in? Or, hey, it's on my desktop. Well, at the end of this book, when you go to archive it off of your computer by putting it onto a DVD or a drive, it's nice to have everything encapsulated in a single folder so that you know where everything is. Um, that way you can always go back to the same location. So what are these folders? Well, our recordings will always go in our recordings folder. Our script will go in our script folder. When we master our final recordings, they will be moved into final MP3s. And if we have any extra emails or notes or things that happen like uh, finance documents or any of that kind of stuff, those can go in notes. I rarely use notes, but it's nice to have it there just in case. All right. Then for us to get ready to record, we need to do one major thing in Twisted Wave, and this will help with our editorial. So I'm going to open Twisted Wave really quick, and that is to set our special paste options. So I will go into edit and you'll notice that special paste is not available to me yet because I have no audio recorded. So I will click on twisted wave and I will go to file and new. And we always record audiobooks in 16 bit and 44,100 Hertz and always in mono. So I will hit okay. Then I will go into edit and now special paste options is available to me and I will click on that. And the only thing I really want you to change here is I need you to bring the attenuation slider, which I think for most of you guys is like maybe negative three or zero. I'm not positive. Uh, I've changed it in mine all the way down to negative 99.99. This is the most important thing. It also needs to be on replace above. And I think the normal setting for your crossfade time is 10 ms. I kind of prefer a tighter crossfade, so I usually change mine to 5 ms, but 10 or 5 would be fine here. And the preview diagram below shows us here when we have normal audio and we replace it in with room tone, which we'll talk about in just a second. We are moving down with no original audio, new audio, and then back up to original audio versus this, which actually will mix our new audio with our old audio, which is not what we want to do. So again, we need to move the attenuation slider all the way down and it needs to be on the replace setting. So I'm gonna hit okay. Now, uh, because my screen is fairly small and I'm recording this video, I have my script on another screen, so I'm gonna read off that and we're gonna go through the process of recording chapter one. So remember that in the Audible and ACX spec, I need to uh, record in a half a second at the top of the chapter, 2.5 seconds between chapter one and the body of the chapter, and 3.5 seconds at the end. So I'm going to do this. I'm only going to record maybe a paragraph, uh, obviously because this video would take forever if I didn't. Um, but I have recorded something else in another file, which I'll bring in for editing. 
Um, also, when you're setting your level, you need to make sure that you're setting the level that is correct for the style of recording you're going to do. Now, I'm using an Audio-Technica AT2020 USB microphone and it has no dials or switches on it for me to change the volume. So for me to actually change the volume of my microphone, I need to open up System Preferences and I need to go into the Sound setting and I need to choose as input Audio-Technica USB and if I go back to Twisted Wave and hit record the meter will start jumping on the right but this is very very important the order of operations for recording is set in that you need to plug in your hardware first then you need to open the program and then you need to go into the program and tell the program what microphone you would like to use if you open up Twisted Wave and the mic isn't plugged in it has no idea what is available and if you plug it in after the fact it doesn't know that you've plugged it in um, and if you've plugged it in and then opened the software but forgot to tell the software that you wanted to use the mic, you might be recording with the laptop lid, which would sound uh, pretty bad. So I have plugged my microphone into my computer, then I have opened Twisted Wave, and now I will go up to Audio, and I will go down to Input Device, and I will choose AT2020 USB, which is my microphone. Okay. Then I will hit the Record button, I will go back to System Preferences, and as I move this slider, you'll see that it is indicated over on the right-hand side as well. And I'm going to read a sentence just to get a level here. I'm not very dynamic in my reading, and so I'm going to record a little hotter. I average, for most people when I record them, uh, between negative 12 and negative 20 for their averages. I'm going to average myself a little bit higher, I think. The most merciful thing in the world, I think, is the inability of the human mind to correlate all its contents. We live in a placid, I, yeah, it's a little too loud, so I'm going to bring it down just a bit, and we will record there. I'll go ahead and close System Preferences. I will hit Stop in Twisted Wave. I will highlight all of my audio with Command A, and I will delete it because that's a test. And now my audio level has been set for the chapter. So. What is room tone? What is noise floor? Well, if I hit record, and I will in just a second, and I be very quiet, which I'll do now, that is room tone. All of this, which is the recording of the room, the sound of the air, the machines, and my laptop is kind of kicking up a little bit of noise right now, uh, that's my room tone. That is also what we call noise floor. And if I highlight it and I hit play, it's recording somewhere around negative 63 and a peak of actually negative 51 and this is actually the more proper reading up here. I'm going to use this to copy and paste throughout my recording to cover over mistakes like lip smacks and clicks and pops and breaths and all of the things that you'd want to clean out of your recording to make it sound good. So I need to record a good chunk of this at the top and when you record your room tone it is crucial that you do not touch anything even your jeans or breathe, your microphone is very, very sensitive and it will pick up some of this stuff. So when you start to record the room tone, just freeze, hold your breath, let it do its thing, and try to record a good 15 or 20 seconds because you're going to need about four or five of those seconds and somewhere in there something's going to happen. Okay? So I am going to highlight all of this and delete it out and knowing, again, that I need 0.5 at the top of my chapter, 2.5 between the chapter one and the body of the chapter and 3.5 at the end, I'm going to record all that stuff in so I don't have to think about it. So I'll go ahead and record now. The Call of Cthulhu by H.P. Lovecraft Chapter one The Horror in Clay the most merciful thing in the world, I think, is the inability of the human mind to correlate all its contents. We live on a placid island of ignorance in the midst of black seas of infinity, and it is not and it is not meant that we should voyage far. The sciences the sciences, each straining in its own direction, have hitherto harmed us little. But some day the piercing together of disassociated knowledge will open up such terrifying vistas of reality and of our frightful position therein that we shall either go mad from the revelation or flee from the deadly light into the peace and safety 
of a new age. Of a new dark age. Obviously, this is abbreviated, but this would be a chapter. And you can see I'm using uh, a, st a stapler here. You should be using a clicker. Uh, the stapler actually was kind of hard to hit. But uh, it indicates, if we zoom all the way out of our audio, that there are mistakes throughout the audio which are easy to address. So I'm going to close this audio and not save it. And I will open up my first chapter. Um, that I have already recorded just so we can go through the editing process. So I will start at the beginning. First things first, let's go ahead and address our clicks by going to the first large click, zooming in, and listening to after the click and then before the click. The science. The science. Okay, and the science. so we will grab from the original silence through the first mess up all the way through to the second mess up and hit delete. Pushes it together. And we will move down the line. Look for our second mistake here. The Asophis have guessed flee from the deadly light into the place and safety of a new dark. Okay, there's some mess ups there. We'll cover that. Okay, so we'll go back here. That we shall either go mad or flee from the deadly light into the place and safety of a new dark age. So ah. So this mistake isn't actually a pickup mistake. This is a mistake because I've made some noise uh, with my mouth because I needed to uh, blow my nose or take a deep breath. So I'm actually going to go ahead and just highlight all of this stuff and hit delete. And we will review it. All right. And we will move down the line, quickly addressing our third mistake here, listening afterwards. And you can start to see that there are patterns in the waveform, so you'll get very, very quick at discerning the differences or the similarities between these, rather, uh, so that you can edit fairly quickly. Always review. That is important. We'll move down to our fourth mistake here. Listen afterwards. Okay, and we will highlight down to this area and hit delete again. And here's another mistake. Okay, and we'll highlight from here to here and hit delete, and that is the end of the chapter. This, of course, was abbreviated as well, just to show you. So I've cleared out my large mistakes. I've finished this off. And if you were working with an editor who was going to go ahead and edit and master your book, this would be the time when you can save the chapter and go ahead and just send it off to them, and they'll take care of all the cleaning. Um, but if you're going to do this yourself, we'll go up to the top of the chapter. But before we do that, let's go ahead and go to File and Save As, and we will save our chapter. And what I want to show you is um, that naming your chapter early on is important for mastering later on. Uh, please don't call your chapters CHAP1, CH1, PART1, uh, or some acronym, The Call of Cthulhu, TCOC1. All of this stuff will be difficult for you to understand in a few months. So go ahead and spell it out, The Call of Cthulhu. I'm a big fan of what we call uh, Pascal casing and programming, which is the first letter of every word is capitalized. I'm also a big fan of no spaces. You cannot be using periods or slashes. Those are directory changes in these uh, operating systems. So a dash, um, a space, or an underscore are OK. I use underscores. And um, chapter 01 is important because as these uh, stack in a finder window, uh, chapter 10 will come up before chapter 1 if you don't uh, include the 0 1. So if you just put uh, 1, chapter 10 will be at the top. Um, if you title this correctly the first time, then when you go to master this, the mastering uh, will take the same name as the original, in which case you don't have to rename it at all, uh, which is easier for you anyways. So where are we going to save this? Well, we're going to save this in our documents, voiceover, audiobooks, The Call of Cthulhu, our book and recordings. And our file format is very important, and that is WAVE. We want to use the full resolution recording for editing and mastering, and we'll finally output an MP3 at the very end. So we will save this. Now I can start editing. Know that I have saved my chapter. We will go to the beginning, and because we have set up our special paste options, we're good to go. Uh, this is difficult for me to see what's going on in our room tone, so before I edit, I always 
vertically zoom up. That's very important so that you can see what's happening down below. I will zoom in. I will find a section of time in here that is clean. And I will grab uh, likely three and a half seconds. Indicated by my selection length up here, three, tick, and five, seven, nine. That's three and a half seconds. I will copy this to my clipboard with Command C. My room tone is not very clean, and that's because my computer fan is running, but we'll assume that that's okay. And I will go to the beginning of the first modulation and listen back. The call of okay. I will highlight back, counting up in the selection length area of my window, 500. This indicates the 0.5 second, and it doesn't have to be exact, it's okay. I will mark this area with my eyes only, click outside and click back, and then highlight to the beginning and hit delete. And now I have put in my 0.5 second at the top of my chapter, satisfying ACX and Audible requirements, and I will hit play. The Call of Cthulhu by H.P. Lovecraft. Chapter one, the horror in clay. Okay, in this section, I need to have 2.5 seconds. So because I have 3.5 seconds on my clipboard, I will hit Command V for paste. I will count by dragging my cursor and looking up to the top right selection length area until I hit 2.500. And again, it doesn't have to be exact, but pretty close. Again, eyeing, click away, click back, drag up to the edge, and hit delete. And if I just took an eyeball of this again, you can see that it's 2.5. And we will hit play. Okay, we reach an area where we will pretend that there is a problem. The volume of this recording isn't very loud, and that's okay. Um, so the original process of editing in many audio programs is to highlight the area you want to get rid of and to paste with Command V, or you can go up to Edit and Paste, and it will shove whatever you have on your clipboard down, in which case you can indicate uh, a distance that feels reasonable by highlighting, clicking, and dragging, and deleting. And so in effect, you've sort of cleaned up the area between here by pasting down and cutting back. And that's OK. That works really well. That's how you do it on Audacity. Um, I'm going to undo and undo one more time. Because we've set up special paste in Twisted Wave, I'm going to use the Command shortcut. And you can see it's not uh, selected yet because I haven't selected any audio, but it is Command Y special paste. So I will highlight the audio that I want to get rid of and before I do that I actually zoom in a little bit more so that I can see both ends. I highlight the audio all the way up to the next modulation and hit command Y on my keyboard and it pastes in the exact amount of selected audio from my clipboard which as you'll remember is 3.5 seconds. So I have this stock of 3.5 seconds on my clipboard in which case I can take and indicated by selection here, 796 ticks of that 3.5 seconds uh, stuck in here in uh, to this audio. So now with one keyboard shortcut, I have essentially replaced the section that I want, and I have not changed, and this is important, I have not changed the cadence of my recording or the timing. The timing of your reads is correct because that's how you feel when you're reading it. So by doing it this way, um, I can replace an area that I want and leave the cadence alone. So let's go ahead and move on. We live on a placid island of ignorance in the midst of black seas of infinity. There's a breath in there. Maybe I want to get rid of that. I will go ahead and highlight this area and command Y one more time to replace it. Infinity. And it was not meant that we should voyage far. The sciences, each straining in its own direction, have There's a little bit of a breath in there. What do we do about all of our breaths? Well, I don't replace all of my breaths. I'm doing some of them here because I want to show you. But if a breath is normal and it feels good and you're in the middle of a sentence, you should leave it alone. Um, that makes you human. That makes the story human. Um, in between new ideas, new paragraphs, those breaths should always be taken out. But if you remove every single breath from your recording, you sound very robotic. I've hit here to harm does little, but someday the piecing together of disassociated knowledge will open up such terror. See, there's a breath in the middle of a sentence. That's okay. Now, this is a little bit of time. 
I want to cut this time down, so I'm going to hit Command Y, but I'm also going to sort of find an area in the middle and delete down some space because I feel like it's a little too long. Vistas of reality and of our frightful position therein, that we shall either go mad. There's another section where the spacing is just a little too long, and that's just my brain. Whoops. Command Z or undo that. That's my brain thinking while I'm reading, which is never a good thing. Therein, that we shall either go mad there we go. Okay. What if I have this breath that's in this section here, and I'd like to leave it because it sounds very natural, but I want to minimize the breath because it's just a bit too loud. And in this case, it's not so loud, but I do want to minimize it a bit. In this case, what I can do is highlight from the last modulation to the next big modulation, really just grabbing the whole breath there. And you really do, when you're grabbing these things, need to grab the entire section in between and not just a small section of it. Um, and I can go up to effects and amplify. And if I'm at zero uh, through amplification, um, I'm not doing anything to my audio. It's just passing in and out. But as I go down in the negative numbers, I'm actually reducing that modulation, this breath, by some given decibel level indicated over here. So um, I always work in three decibel increment amounts, so 3, 6, 9, 12. I'm going to bring this down by 9 decibels. Uh, roughly and hit apply and what this does is just sort of leaves the breath alone but minimizes uh, its impact on the story so that it's there and it feels real but um, it's not poking out there's a breath I do want to get rid of so I'm gonna go ahead and highlight this and I'm gonna hit command Y and we'll okay. review There's a breath I'd like to get rid of there as well, so I'm going to go ahead and hit Command Y. While I'm listening down to this, uh, I'm obviously recording this video, but in a normal process what I'd be doing is listening down and reading the PDF or the story at the same time. This is a really good chance for you to sort of quality control or QC your audio at the same point as you're fixing some of this stuff. So I usually go through and address my clicks first get the story you know, into a place where it's good and it just reads through, and then go to the top, copy my uh, room tone to my clipboard a good three to five seconds, sit back and read the story while I'm cleaning up some of the breaths. If you get to a place where you need to re-record because you've mistakenly said something, uh, Twisted Wave offers a marker functionality with the M key, which is really great. And so you can, let's say uh, you need to record this section again, put your cursor there, hit M and drop a marker. You can leave that alone if you want. Uh, it's actually even better if you double click on the triangle and indicate uh, the page. Obviously this is chapter one so you don't need to indicate the chapter but we'll say this is on page 25 um, and that way uh, later on you can quickly get back to uh, fixing this. If you come back the same day or maybe another day to fix this you can uh, head over right to the marker uh, and you can see that is indicated up here in the map window by dragging over to it and stick your cursor right where you want to record and hit record and it will split open audio in the middle and then you can just highlight the bad audio and you'll end up with exactly what you want and you can obviously clean it up on both sides I'm gonna undo and undo to get back to normal because I'm not gonna do that but that's how you would reread a section we'll move on here with our editorial There's a breath I don't really like, so I'm going to go ahead and highlight that. Again, always review. And it's also very, 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 very important that you're editing your audio book with headphones on. Um, the speakers on your laptop and your computers uh, don't show a lot of the issues that you might have with your audiobook, whereas headphones show all of those issues. So it's very important um, that when you edit down your audio with Twisted Wave, you're always wearing a good pair of headphones. Um, if you don't record with them, that's okay, um, but you need to edit with those. And that's important because the in and out points of your crossfades through special paste um, 
matter. Uh, I might have accidentally truncated this word just a little bit and cut it off, and um, not wearing headphones, I might not have heard that. Okay. Now, at the end of this recording, I've built in uh, over 3.5 seconds, but you can see there's a modulation here. There's a problem. So what I'm going to do, because I have 3.5 seconds on my clipboard, is just hit the end and hit paste, and then indicate with my eyes where my cursor's at, and just kind of highlight all of this stuff at the end and hit delete. All right. I'm going to zoom all the way out. I've completed chapter one. I'm going to hit vertical zoom to bring myself back down to normal. And I have satisfied my ACX and audible requirements by having... 0.5 seconds of room tone at the top, 2.5 seconds of room tone between chapter one and the body of the chapter, and 3.5 seconds of room tone at the end. I have also cleared the audio chapter of mistakes, gross mistakes like uh, repeats of words, and I have also cleaned up some of the room tone in between some uh, areas of lip smacks and also large breaths, and I've also reduced some of the time in the read uh, to make it move a little bit slower, or sorry, move a little bit faster. Now that I've completed this audiobook chapter, I am going to just go up to File and hit Save. And this is important. A lot of times when I work with people who are doing audiobooks, they save um, versions of their edits, uh, version 1, version 2, or different dates, and they end up with lots and lots and lots of files uh, that they don't need to have. Um, I call this file that we have here on our screen a raw file, meaning that there is no processing been done to it. Um, and it started as what I call a dirty raw file, meaning that there were problems, there were clicks, there were mistakes, there were uh, issues of audio. Um, and you might say today record a chapter uh, of an hour, hour and a half, or 20 minutes, or however long the chapter is, and create what we call a dirty raw file and save it. And then maybe next week go to pick up that file and start editing it. And as you do, you are cleaning that dirty raw file into a clean raw file, which is exactly what I have here. In any case, you're taking something from a dirtier state to a cleaner state, but you don't need to save version, but you don't need to save versions of each of that file as you move on, because all you're interested in is the end result, in which case uh, you just have a clean raw file. So now that I've saved this and it resides in my recordings folder of my audiobook templated uh, folder for the Call of Cthulhu, um, I can go ahead and close Twisted Wave, and if I go into the Call of Cthulhu here and I look into my recordings, there is my chapter one. And then I will, over time, populate this folder with chapter two, three, four, five, the opening credit, the closing credit, uh, the epilogue, and whatever, whatever. Just a quick note about the opening credit and the closing credit. Both of these details are provided in the ACX submission page of the book that you actually got and are about to narrate, but generally they always are about the same. The opening credit and closing credit need to be provided as separate pieces of audio, or separate bodies, as Audible call them, and they can be narrated as such. The opening credit is title, written by, and narrated by. So if we're doing the book here, it would be The Call of Cthulhu, written by H.P. Lovecraft, narrated by Mike Varela. The closing credit starts with This Has Been, and then the title, written by the author, narrated by you, the narrator, copyright, the original copyright, the year um, that the book was published. Um, so if this book, The Call of Cthulhu, was, we'll just make up a year, 1950, uh, and the company will say Penguin uh, Press. I'm just making these two things up. Um, and then the production copyright would be who's producing the book, maybe Penguin Press or maybe um, someone else. Not you, but the person who's funding the um, audiobook publishing, um, and the year that it is actually produced, which is the year that you're recording the book. So in this case, the closing credit would be, this has been The Call of Cthulhu, written by H.P. Lovecraft, narrated by Mike Varela, copyright 1950 Penguin Press, production copyright 2015 Penguin Press. And that would be your opening and closing credit, and again, those need to be separate pieces of audio. When it is time for you to master all of your audio files, you will go through the mastering process and move those MP3s into your final MP3 section so that you have all of those in there. And then remember that your script remains here as well. Uh, I'm not going to get into mastering in this video because I've already done that in the Mastering Audiobooks video that is created here on the YouTube channel. So if you have any questions, feel free to leave any comments on the video. And uh, I thank you for watching.